What's up, YouTube? So, we're gonna make a little prediction check on <coughs> both Chainbear and me when it comes to the predictions we made at the beginning of the season. Now, first off, I'm gonna begin with Chainbear's predictions. First, Kimi retires from F1 at the end of the year. It said since last year that his retirement is overdue. However, he hasn't declared anything. <coughs> Four different teams win races. So far, Ferrari and Red Bull are the only ones who have been able to do it. We'll have to wait, but there are only three rounds in. Honda, good but unreliable. Now, it's obvious that Chamber and I are having different criteria to judge this, because he's judging generally, but for me, it's at least one good race and one embarrassing race. And we remember in Bahrain that this happened. However, after that P4 in Bahrain, in China they sort of did this. That brought a safety car that got Daniel Ricciardo on the perfect strategy to go to the podium, but still disappointing, so we can count that one um, point for us. 15 cars get engine penalties. Three rounds in, both Mercedes have gotten engine penalties and nobody else. I'm counting the penalties as of the grid penalties given on qualifying on the races so far, and I'm gonna continue to do that. McLaren ruined the orange livery. They did make a papaya livery with kind of both, both lovers and haters. But let's look at WTF1 on in the um, uh, internet's best reactions on that. Me after seeing the papaya, is that pink hair? Is that the papaya? 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 The papaya McLaren and it's Max Verstappen looking like he's quite disgusted by it. I, I don't know about you guys, I think it seems like the McLaren livery was very well received, but then there's a lot of haters as well, it's very much Marmite. Alistair, what's your, what's your opinion? Marmite. Okay, love it. I quite like it, I think it's pretty nice. However, I do like it, so I'm putting a um, uh, negative on that, because they didn't ruin it. Red Bull, fancy, unique livery, they did put um, a good livery, but they didn't... They, didn't, they actually delivered the same livery as the last few years, so that's a negative. Big Crash causes a halo controversy. Fortunately, it hasn't happened yet. Indy adopts the shield, but F1 rejects it. Probably F1 will reject it. As for how Indy will adopt it, I actually looked it up and haven't found anything. Super hard, used only once. It's been announced for many races up to Canada at this point, but no super hard or hard anywhere to be seen at all. The next race is in Azerbaijan, and we'll have to wait until Abu Dhabi is um, announced. But honestly, I don't think it's going to be announced for any race, but I digress. Liberty overcompensate on grid girls. I actually looked again at both the um, Australian, Bahrain and Chinese Grand Prix broadcast, uh, searching specifically where are the grid kids. Couldn't they aren't anywhere to be seen. Anywhere. Anywhere. If that's not overcompensating, I don't know what is. 2021 rules. Hello! 
Well, now that the phone call is done, we can continue. 2021 rules include MGUH. Unfortunately, they were suppressed. They, they were eliminated for the 2021 reforms. Which is a shame, I actually did like the MGUH, the idea of the MGUH. But, yeah, for whatever reason, it will be eliminated. Bottas finishes P4 or lower on the Travis Championship. I find it rather unlikely. He has 40 points with 3 rounds in. And, um... Well, he's in P3. We'll wait to see. We'll wait to see. Uh, Red Bull sign Alonso. It is said that Alonso will leave McLaren at the end of the season. And Ricardo it will finish his contract with Red Bull at the end of this year. Who knows what's going to happen, but it could happen. Red Bull sign Honda. Christian Honda is looking closely at Toro Rosso. And if they end up well, probably. But we'll wait to see. New aerodynamic rules on ground effects. I looked it up and found nothing. I'm gonna ask you for help on finding sources of information on this one, but yeah. Alonso wins 24 hours of Le Mans. I don't know almost anything about the WEC, but I do know that Le Mans is worth a due to happen in about July. Or June or July. Liberty Media spices up pre-race show. Well, even though they overcompensated on Grid Girls, on my sure, on my opinion, they did make a pretty good um, approach on that by making the broadcast opening more exciting. So let's give ourselves a point for that. Silverstone don't change the British Grand Prix. We're gonna have to wait to know that. Exactly one new race winner. All the race winners so far this season have been predictable. But we'll kinda have to wait to see. Vettel scores twice Kimi's points. Uh, probably, it's obvious that Ferrari likes Vettel more than they like Raikkonen. And so far, the points tally is um, 1.8 times more for Vettel than for Raikkonen. With three rounds in, Vettel has 54, 54 points, Kimi has 30. Someone will get a race ban. Hasn't happened yet, and I hope it doesn't, but let's wait. Red Bull finishes second. I find that unlikely. William finishes seventh. Well, now they already have earned themselves the award to Laughing Suck at the Paddock, so they probably will be happy to finish P7. And a nonsense red flag. We had that on the Azerbaijan Grand Prix of last year. Maybe it will happen again this season, maybe it won't. Who knows? That gives us a score of 3 out of 24 on the Chain Bear Bingo. As for my bingo, I predicted that somebody would come out. This uh, wasn't really a prediction, it was more a um, wish the heart makes. So, as Machiavelli uh, responded me on a comment on, on a video about... on her, Yeah. It's unlikely. He finds it unlikely. Maybe in 10 years? Maybe I'm ahead of my... Maybe I'm ahead of the times? Who knows? And my wish that uh, Ocon would be gay, Sessically said it's called desperation. A claim that I am not going to deny. Alonso hasn't made a reference to his wrestling picture from a couple years ago, but we're gonna have to wait on that. He probably will. As for the shirtless pictures, Lewis Hamilton, uh, well, first off, first off, I restricted myself to photos from the 1st of February to the 31st of December. Lewis Hamilton never failed to disappoint. This photo is from the 10th of April, it does 
fit inside the time boundary and uh, he does look really good and it's not the first time he does it. Point. 15th of February, um, Pierre Gasly posted this picture. Good enough. 15th of January, um, Esteban Alcon did post this. I already knew about this photo by the time I made this prediction, so um, sorry, but you're gonna have the mid red X. You have until December, Ocon, to post a good enough picture, and I'm sure you will. I only check Twitter and Instagram, so maybe that's a little limiting on my sources, but yeah, whatever. As for Charles Leclerc, he gets a big red X because I did look into his Instagram years back in time and not a single shirtless picture to be found. And Lance Stroll, well, I mean, Daniel Ricciardo, Lance Stroll will get back to him in a minute. Daniel Ricciardo promised a um, uh, bunch of pictures of him with his top offs for uh, commercial with underwear. And while it was rather underwhelming, um, he did post this, uh, a video that includes this little snapshot. So, 20th of March fits within the time boundary. Point. Lance Stroll posted this picture, and he does look good and it would have a point. But it's not within the time boundary and it's even from 2016, but he looks so good he does deserve a half point for this one. No one has really made a Russia joke that has gone viral when it comes to when it comes to the Russian Grand Prix. We'll probably have to wait for the Russian Grand Prix on that one, and I'm especially going to be looking at the internet's best reaction for the Russian Grand Prix, but that's gonna happen in a few months. Patriotic fist up in the air for the Mexican GP at lap 19. Once again, the Mexican GP is in late October. We're gonna have to wait. Kimi angry on Team Radio. Not yet, but I'm definitely sure it will happen at some point. Crashes in Monaco and Singapore. Monaco and Singapore hasn't hadn't happened, and so we're gonna have to wait for this one. One race with no DNFs? Well, when, well, we'll take a look at the Chinese Grand Prix, the Internet's Best Reaction by WTF1. Here we go. Holy sh they all finished. They all finished. I'm gonna be here all night. Meaning, we have a point. Someone gets disqualified. Hasn't happened yet. Lewis Hamilton scolded for the bullshit with the princess dress. In case you need some contest, in late December, uh, Lewis Hamilton posted and immediately eliminated this on his Instagram. Why do you wear a princess dress? This is what you get for business. Why do you ask for business dress for business? Boys don't wear princess dresses! Now, yeah, Mike Pence would be proud. He is nowhere in, now in the beginning of the season compared to where he was last year. And this is the only season in his and in all of his career in which he hasn't gone into the victory. Now, it's really early on the season, and I do know that that it, anything could happen in the bunch of races remaining. But he seems to be nowhere so far, not to mention um, engine failure in Bahrain. I am a firm believer in karma, so I'll give myself a point for this one. A non-Mexican or non-Spaniard will give some interview in Spanish. Hasn't happened, at, le at least uh, not that I know, but the most likely to do that is probably Esteban Ocon. Ten races start with a first lap drama. Uh, Bahrain did that. And we could consider Bahrain, the, I mean China, um, with the Force Indias getting far behind, but not so, not so much. So far, proper first lap drama, only Bahrain. But we, we have a lot to, to wait for. Driver sent to the back of the grid twice? Hasn't happened. So far, no one has been sent to the back of the grid. 
Verstappen hasn't gotten driver of the day, but he has done that in every season before this one. And driver of the day, no more than seven races for one driver. Once again, only three drivers have gotten driver of the day. Pierre Gasly, Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo. Ocon on the podium, I hope it happens. This is again not really a prediction, it's more a hope of the heart. Um, it's, it's probable that it could happen. Maybe, maybe, I wish that. Mexico, Mexican Grand Prix, the prof, the prof trophy given by Enrique Peña Nieto. Once again, that's another hope of the heart and probably will happen. It's almost always big functionaries that give the trophy in Grand Prix. Maybe it will be Enrique Peña Nieto since he's about to leave office and he doesn't have much to do. So, maybe. But we're gonna have to wait for the Mexican Grand Prix. No injuries or deaths on this season. Now, what I originally meant was that no driver would be injured in a crash. And so, and well enough, that hasn't happened since Jules Bianchi. But, I would be a bit of a hypocrite if I ignored this little incident with um, Kimi Spitzop that injured Francesco Cigarini. So, sorry, no point for that one. Andres Manuel loses the Mexican general election. Now, pretty much every business is wait, hoping that will happen, and it was my last prediction that went uh, before my additional ones. Andres Manuel, if you don't know, if you're, if you're not Mexican, you probably don't know this, Andres Manuel is basically the Donald Trump of Mexico. And unlike Donald Trump, he do, we do have the problem that Andres Manuel is, is falling way too damn high. The podium is set, it's gonna be through these three candidates who are going to be at the podium of the election, but only one can be the president. And with Andres Manuel polling so damn high, it's difficult to know that even the, the presidential debate that did happen later today will do anything. It is alarming, and it's probably gonna be a problem, but who knows, we're gonna have to wait, the election is due to happen on the 1st of July. And Andres Manuel, to be honest, is a pop is a pseudo left wing pop populist with very right wing ideas, and yeah, he's as I said the Donald Trump of Mexico. And even though my dad says that no way he's going to win, my mom said the same thing about Donald Trump. So yeah. Verstappen does something stupid. Now, I made this prediction before Australia because I remembered that both 2016 and 2017 he did stupid things. So I predicted that Verstappen would do something stupid and sure enough in China he did oh, this. Stafford decided to go for it. Kimi Raikkonen has managed to scoot past Lewis Hamilton by the looks of it. But Sebastian Vettel hit by Max Verstappen. Now, when the fact that we will get used to the halo, at least I have gotten used to the halo. I think that I think that's fair enough. I'll give myself a point. And I also predict, I also predicted after Bahrain that. Pet stops will continue to be a pain in the ass. Every single race so far has gotten a few pit stop problems. First both Haas, then Kimi Raikkonen, and then Stoffel Van Dorn in free practice in China. So it probably will be a problem. Another hope of the heart that Force India will not smash into each other this season. And so far, it hasn't happened. Now, this is the last prediction having to do with Formula 1. The last two are imported not for Formula 1, but for me personally. The Mexican Peso will devaluate. I did the prediction a couple um, days, days ago because I knew that Andres Manuel was falling with such high numbers. And I'm already prepared for that. 
I'll probably tell you in some later video why, but I'm preparing for this. And the 19th of September, something will go terribly wrong. Now, the 19th of September is my birthday. And um, for the last three years, it, something has always gone wrong. 19th of September 2015, my 18th birthday and my first ever hangover. 19th of September 2016, to put it shortly, this guy fucked it all up. I'm gonna make a video um, sometime in the future about my abuse story. 2017, had moved to a new city, new house, new life, what could possibly go wrong? Good evening, in central Mexico, teams of rescue workers are searching for survivors after a powerful earthquake that's claimed at least 200 lives. Dozens of buildings have collapsed, including a primary school where 21 children are known to have died, many others are still missing. Almost half the deaths were in the densely populated capital, Mexico City, where power lines and gas pipes have been cut. The magnitude of the earthquake was measured at 7.1. The epicenter was around 75 miles south of the capital. Yeah, something went wrong, terribly wrong. So that gives me 4.6 points out of 25 so far. And that means that so far we have 7.6 points out of 49 across both the boards as of the 22nd of April 2018. I uh, hope I'm gonna, gonna be able to do some video in the future. Once again, when it comes to the Mexican general election, the first presidential debate is, is due to happen later today as I record this. With nothing else to say, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.